up on this spooky Halloween edition of Cash Rendezvous. It's not new for the howl to sell out. What's new is when. We went out with real ghost hunters and got the real thing. It was a week of horrors for our Aggie teams, but there were a few bright spots. I'll show you what they were in sports. The pumpkin walk doesn't need publicity. We'll tell you what they do need. All that and more, this is Cash Rendezvous. Welcome to our special Halloween edition of Cash Rendezvous. I'm Misty Inglet. And I'm David Matthew Stewart. Last weekend, our popular Halloween dance known as the Howl brought in quite a crowd. It's been around for 36 years, but tickets sold out early this year. Some people had fun while they waited to get into the Taggart Student Center for the Howl, and each of them bought tickets in advance. This is the first year that the Utah State University Student Association sold out before the event took place. The Howl was open to everyone, including those who don't go to USU. I went last year as a non-student, and it was pretty awesome. Everybody has a good time. The atmosphere is wild, um, and I like to get wild, I'll be honest with you. Because it's so popular, USU kept the event this year to allow 6,000 people. Let's rewind 10 years to when Nick Riggs, the founder of Cache Valley Paranormal, lost his grandfather and started asking questions about the afterlife. He took a voice recorder to a cemetery and saw a windmill spinning out of control. I'll let him take over. I was like, if there's somebody here, can you make this stop? And it instantly stopped. And then I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, can you get it going again? And nothing happened, it just, it didn't go again. But when I got back home, I listened to the recording and on the recording it says, help me. More on spooky audio later. First, aside from shaky video and muffled screams, what is ghost hunting? How does it work? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of talking in the air, talking to yourself, and that's what we're trying to show people. The tools of this trade are going to set you back. Riggs estimates he's spent over $6,000 on his hobby. From voice recorders to night vision cameras to REM pods. It's also an exercise in phone tag. I met up with CVP at the old train station in Brigham City. Not quite Cache Valley, but it was the only spot willing to work with the reporter's deadline. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff as far as finding locations and making sure we have everything lined up to be there. Even then, some businesses don't want what they're finding to get out. A few in downtown Logan have even sworn Cache Valley Paranormal to secrecy. The general public overall isn't worried about it because if they believe in that kind of thing, they're going to usually be fascinated by it and intrigue them. And if they don't believe in it, then it's not going to hurt them. Cash Valley Paranormal gets permission to hunt in places like this old caboose. Places people just like us used to spend time and exert energy. And a spot where CVP says spirits might still like to hang out. But this is where we had all our activity, is right here in these two cars. Yeah, that nervous breathing you hear is me. Because after learning why and how, I wanted to see what ghost hunting actually looks like. So they set me loose with their night vision camera. Now, Nick said I was pretty lucky. Most people don't get to see as much action as I did on their first time out. You can check out that full video of what I saw on our Facebook page, all 30 minutes of it. Uh, now, things got a little spooky at Skyview last week when the lights went out during their morning marching band performance. About three minutes from the end of our performance, the stadium went completely black. No one could see a thing. They started pulling out their cell phones and shining their flashlights on their cell phones towards the field. I think it really shows how much Mr. Beach and the rest of the staff really care about us and they keep pushing us forward that our first response is we got to keep going. They know what they're doing. They've, they used to make us do our routine with our eyes closed. And so it was kind of like the same thing because it was dark. So it's, they're really good instructors. Sell it. 
extend your body more, snap your horn down more crisply, nail your feet, be more perfect, go. I think, uh, especially with Mr. Beach, you know, he keeps encouraging us to go through no matter what, you know. And it really shows when the lights turn off, we, we kept going, just followed his example and went through the dark. I'm guessing it's because your feet aren't tight enough with the pulse. So we gotta have feet. It was amazing that they all stayed together and stayed in formation and marched all the way through it. It was really cool. Now the band's been practicing together since April, which Beach said made it possible for them to play in the dark. They used to be made by hand with just a stone and a chisel. Now the process is a bit more complex. We went to Brown Monuments here in Logan to see how headstones are made. Machines like this and computers are the starting point for making headstones. First, they're designed on the computer, which prints out the stenciling. This is how the stencil comes to us. And then we just pick it and get it ready to lay on the stone. Once the stencil is on the stone, it goes to the paneling room, where it's blasted first with sand and then steel. This is done so that the sand will whiten the background, and then the steel just makes it just a little bit lighter as well. This helps for the next process of deep engraving the lettering with another sandblaster. Once engraved, the stencil is peeled off, and here is where some people want it more personalized. Custom portraits or drawings like these are done as etchings, and they bring in an artist from Gilbert, Arizona to do that. After all artwork is done, the final process is cleaning. When the stone's new, there's the glue on it from the stencil. And that's a filler, and we use a, a sol solvent on that to, to clean it up. When the glue has been scrubbed off, it's ready to be loaded up to go to the cemetery for its final resting place. Brown Monuments has been in business since 1928, and they are currently the only monument shop in Logan that makes their headstones on site. USU business students may have some new classrooms next semester. Construction crews expect to be done with Huntsman Hall by December, and the business school has set a dedication date for March 16th. The hall will add 21 new classrooms. March 16th is when the Huntsman School of Business will dedicate the new building, but permits to start letting students in may come at another time. None of us really knows when the occupancy permit comes because it really depends on, you know, if all six or eight, whatever the inspector, inspections are, are clean on the first try, it gets done in a week or 10 days, whatever it is. If there is a major issue, who knows how long that takes. Classes scheduled to take place in Huntsman Hall may be in a different building until it's ready for students. So Halloween is here and most people think trick-or-treating, but others think pumpkin walk. Our Alicia Facer, Facer is here to tell us a little bit more about it. Alicia. Thanks. So have you guys ever been to the pumpkin walk before? Have you gone? It's been a long time. A couple times. A couple times. I've gone a couple times myself and each and every year it seems to be getting more and more popular. So let's check it out and see how it did this year. Music and pumpkins have now been together for 32 years. The pumpkin walk is something that keeps bringing people back year after year. I like to see what uh, everyone has done as far as the creative things they do with the pumpkins. The scenes change each year. Most of them are just individuals with families that do them. Some of them are businesses that get together and the employees get together and create a scene. Some of them are church groups. Others are friends. This year, the walk has over 35 different displays, ranging from Looney Tunes to Hotel Transylvania. But it didn't always start with so many different scenes. What started out with just a few pumpkins at one house and one display has now grown into the pumpkin walk that has over 30 different scenes and people come from miles just to see it. We have people come from different states who plan their vacation to the Cache Valley to, to get to enjoy it. It has grown so much that over 2,000 people go through each year and a lot of them keep coming back. 
it's always interesting to see like the grade schools always do something and it's really cute. It's tradition, you know, we have traditions in the valley and that's, this is one good tradition that they have. So I went and filmed with a pumpkin walk last year and there were a lot of scenes and she said they had about 35 but it seemed like it was a little smaller this year than last year. Wonder if that's because maybe Halloween just came so fast. I felt like it came really fast anyway. Maybe people just weren't ready for it. Maybe. I mean, they're also looking for more volunteers. They need people to help set up the scenes, take them down, carve the pumpkin. So they said they're always looking for extra hands. I think it'd be kind of fun to help with the pumpkin walk, actually. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, thanks, Alicia. When we come back, ever wonder why Halloween exists? It's a story of why and where it came from. And what's worse for your brain than zombies? Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. You might have traditions you do every year for Halloween, but where do they come from? Carving pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns, dressing up as costumes, and trick-or-treating all come from the pagan holiday, Samhain. It means summer's end, and like many pagan holidays, it signifies a change of the season. But Samhain is also a festival of the dead. These traditions began as rituals to either scare off bad spirits or gather offerings. Thought, um, it's become more fun in games now, uh, some, but some pagans think you should know where it came from. Even though modern day Halloween doesn't look anything like Samhain, um, there are still like little nuggets inside of those cultural celebrations that are important for us as a people to remember. The USU Pagan Alliance did shut down due to lack of membership, but there are Pagan Alliances due um, outside of the Cache Valley that are organizing a Samhain festival. Are you good at multitasking? Well, you might not be as good of a multitasker as you think you are. We have Jamie with us to tell us more. Thanks, um, Misty. So multitasking has been a very controversial issue, especially with all the developments on electronics. I went out to show you the controversies. Talk and walk. Study and talk. Listen and walk. All the time. Of course, I'm a student. I multitask all the time. I don't know how you live your life without multitasking. Some say yes to multitask. I know that I tend to do it too much. I have to do two things at once. We do multitask doesn't mean that we do it well and in fact study shows that we do not do it well so if you think you're good at it you're actually not good at it. And some say yes even though they know it's more productive to do one at a time. One of the more controversial issues nowadays? Can we multitask? Maybe there's somebody out there who's perfected it. I know that it doesn't work for me. It's not that hard to multitask like do multitasking. According to Savucci and Tachin's threaded cognition theory, streams of thoughts can be represented as threads of processing. The theory predicts that multitasking interferes if the two tasks need the same brain module at the same time. These modules can be vision, motor, long-term memory, working memory, or perception of time. So if the tasks require the same module in the brain, brain can only manage one task at a time. But the theory is still developing. There are other opinions on multitasking though. Are we good at multitasking? Or are we just bad at concentrating? I probably get distracted too easily. I'm not able to focus. Remember? Dr. Carter Olson banned laptops from her class <laughs> and she saw a change. The engagement in class, the difference in engagement in class was incredible. 
Because there's no definite answer yet, it will remain controversial for now. So researchers suggest multitaskers should first determine which tasks should be done with full attention. See, I always think I'm good at multitasking, but I guess maybe I'm not as good as I think I am. Maybe not. That's what they're saying, so. Well, thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Looking for a new place to snowboard or ski? After a two-year delay, Cherry Peak in Richmond is hoping to finally turn on their lifts. These chairs may not be moving now, but that could change before the first snowfall. Some major changes to the layout of the lodge set the project back almost a year. Construction crews are now doing some finishing touches on the kitchen area, and the next major step is bringing in the carpet. Although lodge construction was delayed, three out of the four chairlifts are certified and ready to run. Even with the setbacks, people are still looking forward to opening day. People are so excited, and sure there's a small group that are not, but those that are far outnumber those that are not. There still isn't a set opening date, but Chadwick is hoping to have the lodge finished in two to three weeks. A space program designed to get girls involved in science and engineering launched a balloon with sensors they built over 100,000 feet. Our Alicia Facer went to lunch and see what it takes to make this balloon fly. Blowing up the balloon was the easy part of this launch. The hard part came over the past four months when the girls had to code and censor their payloads. I got my sensor and there was something wrong with the code, something wrong with the sensor, something wrong with the computer. And that was not very fun. <laughs> Each box is called a payload. The girls split into groups and made two to attach to the balloon. First we just kind of played around with the sensors and got to know, got familiar with them and found out what they did. The sensors the girls built track things like luminosity, temperature, movement, and GPS coordinates. These computers right here are live tracking the balloon up there. That feed is being uploaded to the internet so people all over the world can track the balloon's progress. But one little mistake could throw the entire project off. A little semicolon could be the difference between whether your program works or not. But they got their program to work. They launched the balloon and it rose to 115,000 feet before it burst and dropped back to Earth. Alicia Facer, ATV News. They programmed the balloon to land in Woodruff and it actually landed within three miles of their prediction. Now let's take a look at weather and see what it's like, going to be like for us on Halloween. Taylor. Thanks, David. Okay, so for our weather here um, at ATV News, I'm going to give you what's going to go happen with this weekend for Halloween. So, over here in the northwest, or in the northeast, you can see that there's a lot of thunderstorms going on um, in the New England area and around the Great Lakes. And then also, here in the west, there's a little bit up top um, over by Washington and Oregon. And it's starting to move its way to Utah. Let's look at the Utah Raider. So, as you can see, there's a little bit of stuff coming towards um, Utah, um, and that will, hap that will come to Logan area tomorrow as well. Um, can we look at the, let's look at the seven day forecast. So today is a great beautiful day. It's sunny, partly cloudy with a um, high of 59. And tomorrow um, is going to be 51 degrees with a 60% chance of rain. Um, Friday is going to be 52. It's going to be sunny, which is perfect for our football game this weekend. And then Saturday will be 59, which is practically perfect in every way for Halloween. And then for Sunday, it'll be in the 65s, but then Monday it'll drop down to 47. And it will be 45 on Tuesday. Now I've heard that it's going to be maybe snowing in the mountains on um, Tuesday night. But um, I also heard, though, that this week or last week um, was pretty scary week for our athletics. Sarah? That's right. Thanks, Taylor. So this really was a week of horrors for our Aggie teams as most of them struggled to get a win. In volleyball, Carly Lenzen serves the ball that Wyoming sends back to the Aggies, giving Rachel Gale the chance to take the kill. The Aggies won their first set coming into the game against Wyoming on Thursday but the Cowgirls were quick to turn that around. The Aggies set up to block Wyoming in the second set, but weren't able to stop the ball. In the fourth set, Erica Moscoso dove for the ball, and Hannah Gleason then sent it back over. But the Aggies lost their energy and lost Wyoming at the end of the fourth set. 
The 3-1 to one score left the team in a somber mood and made them realize that they have room for improvement. They're asking us to make changes and we need to be okay with being uncomfortable because in the long run they want us to be better. After their disheartening we loss to Wyoming it. on Thursday, the Aggies returned on Saturday with a higher energy and hopes to win against the Colorado State Rams. We talked about it a lot uh, before practice yesterday and we had a great practice and practiced it, practiced having that energy that we wanted in today's game. That energy was certainly present in the first set when Kayla DeCourcy worked with her team to get a quick kill. Later in the first set, the team held on to that energy and let an error in the attack by the Rams get them the point. But in the third set, the Aggies set up and go for an attack, but Colorado State sends the ball right back. Hannah Gleason dives for the save, then Maddie Day sets it up for Rachel Gale to attack, but in the end, the Rams come in with the kill and Utah State misses the block. At the end of the third set, the Aggies lost to Colorado State 3-0. But compared to Thursday night's loss, the team was happier with their overall performance. That's been the big goal for us. Let's just go play some good volleyball and see if we can do it for a long period of time. And so I think we showed moments of that all the way up to that third game halfway through. And then we kind of just get frazzled again. On Friday, the Utah State football team traveled to Southern California to take on the San Diego State Aztecs. After beating Boise State 52-26 last week, the Aggies hoped to bring home another win, but instead had a major loss with a final score of 48-14. The Aggie softball team finished off its season with a Halloween scrimmage on Saturday. Instead of regular uniforms, the USU softball team sported Halloween costumes for their end-of-season game. And with pitches that ended up with a cowboy in the outfield, and hits by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This game was clearly about having fun with the sport. And while the game was meant to let the girls loosen up after their season, it also meant to help them bond and get ready for the spring season. Going into the springtime, I think it's just a mentality of, of winning. We want winning to happen here at Utah State. And, and slowly over the last three years, we've seen progress, but now we need to really take those next two or three steps. And we feel like we now have the personnel to really take those two or three steps. The USU soccer team scored a victory at their away game on Thursday by winning 1-0 against Colorado State. But it was a mixed bag for women's soccer as they traveled to Laramie, Wyoming and lost to Wyoming 2-1. The women's soccer team's last home game will be this Friday against Boise State. Both the Mountain Crest Mustangs and the Skyview Bobcats have never lost a game this season. That is until Friday night when they went head-to-head. -head. Bubba Thompson passes to Court Fuller, who doesn't seem to want to go down until a couple of guys get him. Later, the ball goes to Lavani Demoni, who doesn't catch it. But there's a flag on the play, and they gain more yards. Despite inching a little further from this play, they don't get close enough to the end zone by fourth down, and they're forced to kick a field goal. Let's see if they make it. Denied. That Skyview's turn with the ball. Garrison Beach passes to Zach Morrison, who shuffles a little before going down. Later, Alex McRae catches it right before going out of bounds. On fourth down, Tanner Stokes catches it, but the referees call incomplete. The ball's turned over for the last seconds of the half, but Mountain Crest doesn't score. In the end, Skyview barely beats the Mustangs 5-0. Although Skyview came out on top, both schools will play in playoff games this Friday. Now this is the end of our sports report today, but we've got some great home games to look forward to next week with women's soccer on Friday against Boise State and then Spectrum Magic coming into full force this Saturday when our Aggie basketball team plays against Oklahoma Panhandle State. Back to you, Misty. Thanks, Sarah. When we come back, how one Cache Valley house goes all out for Halloween. And less is more when choosing some Halloween costumes. I can't say anything. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. So, oh, we're all out. So no just a quick like choice. someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty, 
Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. see houses decorated for Christmas, but one Logan homeowner has something else in mind for Halloween. This is the whole home, and for the last five years, they have decorated their house with goblins and ghouls. Every Halloween, they add more decorations to their collection to bring out the creepiness of the season and their love for the holiday. I've always grown up kind of like in Halloween, and ever since we've uh, started, you know, bought our own house, it just seemed like it would be a fun thing to decorate. Hole said his home is very popular on Halloween and that many trick-or-treaters always stop by, so make sure you check it out before this Saturday. People gathering for Halloween festivities may be a little shocked to see all the bare skin showing this year. Yeah, our Taylor Murley went to the Hall to check out some interesting costume. Taylor. Yeah, I'm a southern gentleman. I believe in modesty is the hottest, so I jumped on out there to see what the kids got. It. They just got it hanging all out. As crowds gathered to celebrate Halloween at events like the Howl, some of the costume decisions looked a little risque. <laughs> this year it seems like more skin the better, but most people didn't decide on their outfits with that in mind. I didn't have anything else to wear. Get my closet already. Sexy missionaries. I don't know, it's funny. I don't know, I kind of just went into Halloween City and picked one. Because my friends were wearing it. Others had no shame on why they decided on their costumes. I chose the outfit that I did because it was comfortable and slutty at the same time. You're crazy. Halloween stores like this are where most people get their costumes for the holiday. The employees of these stores have seen a change in the types of costumes they keep in stock. I mean, we even have a costume now that it's just pretty much a swimming suit under. You clasp it, and that's it. I mean, it's about that wide. It's 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 gotten really bad. Oh yeah. Even though stores are adding more revealing outfits to their inventories, Wallace still believes in the frights of Halloween. It just might not be for everyone anymore. People still care about the scary side of Halloween. Um, teenagers, kids don't though. As Halloween changes from goblins and ghouls to scantily dressed nurses and cats, older generations are reminiscing about how they used to dress. Holy crap! <laughs> Very modest as growing up and we were taught that. I think it's just the changing times. Having grandchildren, these ladies are experiencing those changes firsthand. It was kind of one of those things I wanted to put my black cape around both my granddaughters and walk around with them. Even though they are shocked by the new costume trends, they'll be the first to admit they let loose back in their day. I think sometimes what we did when we were younger and some of the parties that we went to we could get a little risque and kick up our heels a little bit. <laughs> Taylor Murray, ATV News. Yeah, parents may want to check your kids' costumes before you let them go out this weekend. Yeah, it'll definitely be beneficial to be warm too, so definitely. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for joining us on this Halloween edition of Cash Rendezvous. We'll see you next week for Aggie TV News. Thank you. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition.